how Bitcoin works. Welcome to Crypto, guys. Thank you very much. Big homie Spuda out here in Cape Town, South Africa. Thank you very much for joining this channel, guys. The first disclaimer I'd like to throw out there is that I am not a financial advisor. This channel was strictly created for educational purposes to encourage you to go out there and seek knowledge before you start investing in anything. The first thing we're going to do is go straight to that chap chap sign at the bottom of the screen on the count of one, two, three. Click, 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 click. Thank you very much, guys. Let's go over there to that subscribe button. Click. Don't forget to switch on that notification bell. Let's get right straight into it. I am new, brand new cryptocurrency. I'll keep reading different articles. Some people oh, bump into my content. I'll be boring you guys because I know I don't know much about it. You guys are probably advanced. Would like to be like you guys one day. But me, I'm just taking my time with my followers and we are learning this thing step by step. That's why I do videos daily. I do videos daily because I keep reading different articles from different platforms. Now, the article I'm going to read right now is from Investopedia.com. How Bitcoin works. And I'll keep being repetitive um, on this content because we're teaching here. Some people might bump into video number 29 and it'll take them back to episode number one and they'll start watching all the other videos. Some people might bump into this content three years from today. But I know there'll always be beginners in this crypto space. That's why I've named it Welcome to Crypto because it's strictly for beginners like me. I'm also learning it. Why am I learning it? Why am I in this space? Well, why did I create this channel? Because I was scammed before. So after I got scammed, I knew that I've got a, a sort of a decent following on social media. So let me my result just encourage education around my followers so they don't get to lose money like I did. They don't get to get scammed like I was. How does it work though? How Bitcoin works? Let's get into the article straight up. Some of you guys who read these articles with me, who join me in these videos, I appreciate you guys. And I know that I also give you more to go read about, to go learn about. And I know this platform encourages you guys to want to learn more. How exactly to categorize Bitcoin is a matter of controversy. It is a type of currency, a store of value, a payment network, or an asset class. What is it really? Fortunately, it's easier to define what Bitcoin actually is. It is a software. Don't be fooled by stock images or shiny coins and blazoned with modified Thai bot symbols. Bitcoin is purely digital phenomenon, a set of protocols and processes. It is also the most successful of hundreds of attempts to create virtual money through the use of crypto cryptography. The science of making and breaking codes. Remember guys, Satoshi Nahamoto, we don't even know if it's one person, if it was a group of people. We don't know if they were female, they were male. We don't know where they were, which country they're from. What we know is that this system works. But they were, or he was, or she was not the first person to attempt some sort of digital currency. Um, I think they were, or he was, the, or she was the first sort of people or person to get it corrected because this system is working. Okay, as the, the article continues, it is also the most successful of hundreds of attempts to create virtual money through the use of cri cryptography, the science of making and breaking codes. Some of you guys who've watched our old videos would know what encryption means. I mean, you guys have been using computers for a while and encryption would probably mean something that is sort of protected. It's not like my, a song that you can send to me, I can duplicate it and send it to other people. You can't do that with this. It's encrypted. It's crypt a form of cryptography was used. Um, the science of creating this thing made it unbreakable. Like you can't, you can't duplicate it, you know? That's how good um, Satoshi Nahamoto or whoever they are um, created this thing to be. Bitcoin has inspired hundreds of imitators, but it remains the largest cryptocurrency by market capitalization. It is a distinction, oh, a distinction it has held throughout its decade plus history. Remember, it started back in 2009 and there's currently over 140 million Bitcoin holders. I'm one of them. And it is predicted that by the year 2025, there's going to be about a billion of us. And remember when uh, the internet was new? It was apparently growing at a 63% um, rate per annum. Apparently right now, cryptocurrencies are growing at a rate of 113% per annum. So the adoption of Bitcoin is even more, is comparable to that of the internet back then when the internet was new. And it's even faster, as they're saying. And they're predicting uh, it to have at least about a billion users by the year um, 2025. And it's quite exciting to be one of the early adopters. I'm even late, I'm only learning it now, but I'm glad that we are all here 
finally we're here it's still in its earliest stages especially in africa so there's lots and lots of opportunities let's continue reading this article from investopedia.com how does bitcoin works they're saying it has inspired hundreds of imitators but it remains the largest cryptocurrency by market cap a distinction it has also throughout throughout its decade plus history it is a general note that according to the bitcoin foundation the word bitcoin is capitalized when it refers to the cryptocurrency as an entity and it is given as bitcoin when it refers to a quantity of the currency or the units themselves bitcoin is also abbreviated as btc throughout its article we will alternate between 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 these usages key takeaways from what i've read so far from this article Bitcoin is a digital currency, a decentralized system that records transactions in a distributed ledger, which is called blockchain. Bitcoin miners run complex computer rigs to solve complicated puzzles in an effort to confirm groups of transactions, which are called blocks. Upon success, these blocks are added to the blockchain. They create like links, like, chain, like a chain, a blockchain record, and the miners are then rewarded with a small number of Bitcoins. Other participants in the Bitcoin market can buy or sell tokens through cryptocurrency exchanges or peer-to-peer. -peer. Remember guys, when it was created, it was created as a platform where I can send money to my friend on the other platform without anybody's interference in the middle, without a middleman. So it's a peer-to-peer -peer transaction platform. So a, other participants in the Bitcoin market can buy or sell tokens through cryptocurrency exchanges or peer-to-peer. And the Bitcoin ledger is protected against fraud via the trustless system. Bitcoin exchanges also work to defend themselves against potential theft, though high profile thefts have occurred and they continue to occur. Just like a couple of months ago, when you guys heard about that story of Afri Crypt of the South African young brothers, I think a 20 year old and a 21 year old, if not a 19 year old. And um, yeah, but eventually I think they were caught or they handed themselves over to the cop, etc. Anyways, we continue. Some of these key takeaways are actually not part of the um, article that I've been reading, but it's, it's um, some of the summary, some of the information that you guys must learn and you must hear about. By the way, I'm going to put the link of the, the description on the link of this article so you guys can go read it yourself. Um, the blockchain. Bitcoin is a network that runs on a protocol known as the blockchain. A 2008 paper by a person or people calling themselves Satoshi Nakamoto first described both the blockchain and Bitcoin, and for a while, the two terms were all but synonymous. The blockchain has since evolved into a separate concept, and thousands of blockchains have been created using similar cryptographic techniques. This history can make the, non, the nomenclature, nomenclature confusing. Already is already confusing. I'm confused, Baba. Maroksa is a fundament, even if it can be confusing. Receive forward, Sabona Pambi. Blockchain sometimes <laughs> refers to the original Bitcoin blockchain. Guys, you must remember I'm from the hood, right? And most of my audiences are people from the hood. So I'm trying to elevate my people and saying, hey guys, let's know about this money thing. So sometimes my tembisaness will keep coming out. Just uh, forgive me and just uh, bear with me. Né? So the basics of blockchain technology are mercifully straightforward. At other times, they're saying here, this history can make the nomenclature, whatever they're saying there. Maybe you can write on the comment section what that word means. Sometimes if I don't understand the word, I check the context like the rest of the paragraph, what they're saying, and I sort of try and make up what the word could have meant or what it means. If I don't have time to check it out quickly on the dictionary, like right now as we're recording this video. Blockchain sometimes refers to the original Bitcoin blockchain. At other times, it refers to blockchain technology um, in general or to any other specific blockchain, such as the other or the one that powers Ethereum. The basics of blockchain technology are mercifully straightforward. Any given blockchain consists of a single chain of discrete blocks of information. Arranged chronologically, in principle, this information can be a string of ones and zeros, meaning it could include emails, contracts, land titles, marriage certificates, or bond trades. In theory, any type of contract between two parties can be established on a blockchain. As I've been saying to you guys on other videos, this blockchain technology is not only for money. It's not only for Bitcoin and investing. It can be used and it will be used for other things. It's an invention that is not going anywhere. It'll just keep growing and getting bigger and bigger. So you might as well just learn it right now. 
So as the article continues here, they're saying in theory, any type of contract between two parties can be established on a black blockchain as long as both parties agree on a contract. This takes away any need for a third party to be involved in any contract. This opens up a world of possibilities, including peer-to-peer -peer financial products, such as loans or decentralized savings and checking accounts, wherein banks or any intermediary is irrelevant in this case. Though Bitcoin's current goal is to be a store of value as well as a payment system, there is nothing to say that Bitcoin could not be used in such a way in the future, though consensus would need to be reached to add these systems to Bitcoin. The main goal of the Ethereum project is to have a platform where these smart contracts can occur. Therefore, creating a whole realm of decentralized financial products without any middleman or the fees and potentially data breaches that come along with them. This versatility has caught the eye of governments and private corporations. Indeed, some analysts believe that blockchain technology will ultimately be the most impactful aspect of the cryptocurrency craze. In Bitcoin's case, though the information on the, black, on the blockchain is mostly transactions, Bitcoin is really just a list. Person A sent X Bitcoin to person B, who sent Y Bitcoin to person C, etc. By tallying these transactions up, everyone knows where individual users stand. It's important to note that these transactions do not necessarily need to take place between humans. Anything can access and use Bitcoin network. And your ethnicity, gender, religion, species, or political leaning is completely irrelevant. This creates vast possibilities for the Internet of Things. In the future, we could see systems in which self-driving taxis or Uber vehicles have their own blockchain wallets. The passenger would send cryptocurrency directly to the car, which would not move until the funds were received. The vehicle would be able to assess when it needs fuel and use its wallet to facilitate a refill. Remember, I've been telling you guys on other videos and other episodes that the blockchain technology is not only going to be for money usage, it's going to be for a whole lot of other things. And it, en it enables inventors and creators and pioneers and just all the future Mark Zuckerbergs, the future Albert Einsteins to just keep on being great and creating awesome things that keep making life um, better and easier here on Earth just because of the blockchain technology. That's why I'm saying, let's be educated about it. Let's learn and let's understand how it works. Let's, own, let's not only be excited about the money aspect of it, that we just want to jump in and want to make money. Let's understand it, because once you understand it, you do better. Even when you get to invest, you get to make better decisions. That's why I keep encouraging you guys to keep, um, uh, that's why I keep doing these videos to encourage you guys to keep seeking knowledge out there. This means that the record is publicly available, but it also means that there are complicated measures in place for updating the blockchain ledger. There is no central authority to keep tabs on all Bitcoin transactions, so the participants themselves do so by creating and verifying blocks of transactional data. See the section on mining below for more information. Obviously, it's on this article, and I'll also put the link of this article on the description. Let's continue quickly before we wrap it up. Let's talk about the mining of Bitcoin. I've also been asking myself, I have touched on it on other episodes right here on Welcome to Crypto, but just a quick one. Maybe some of you guys did not see those um, videos. What is mining in Bitcoin? Mining is just like the old school mining, but this is how it works. Because I used to ask myself, like, does it happen digitally? Is it virtual? Or is it like real mine where there's like Kanda Kanda Zuko underground and there's excavators, etc.? I didn't understand it. The same year on this article from Investopedia.com, the process of mining that maintains this trustless public ledger, oh sorry, the process that maintains this trustless public ledger is known as mining. Under, undergirding the network of Bitcoin, I don't know what undergirding is, guys, you can put it on the, on the, on the um, comment section over there, but I'll sort of make it up by, with the sentence, undergirding the network of Bitcoin users who trade the cryptocurrency among themselves is a network of miners who record these transactions on the blockchain. Oh, they play a very pivotal role. And I also hear that they actually even get incentivized by Bitcoin just for doing that and for getting it right. How beautiful is that? Because then it encourages um, all of them to keep doing the right thing. Anyways, recording a string of transactions is trivial. 
for a modern computer, but mining is difficult because Bitcoin software makes the process artificially time consuming. Without the added difficulty, people could spoof transactions to enrich themselves or bankrupt other people because you know how we are as human beings. They could log a fraudulent transaction in the blockchain and pile so many trivial transactions on top of it that untangling the fraud would become impossible. Yes, as good Sinjan as human beings. But anyway, they're saying here, by the same token, it would be easy to insert fraudulent transactions into past blocks. The network would become a sprawling, spammy mess of competing ledgers and Bitcoin would be worthless. Combining proof of work with other cryptographic techniques was Nakamoto's breakthrough. Bitcoin software adjusts the difficulty miners face in order to limit the network to a new one megabyte block of transactions every 10 minutes. That way, the volume of transactions is, di is digestible. The network has time to vet the new block and the ledger that precedes it. And everyone can reach a consensus about the status quo. Miners do not work to verify transactions by adding blocks to the distributed ledger purely out of a desire to see the Bitcoin network run smoothly. They are compensated for their work as well. We'll take a closer look at mining in the compensations below. Some words that you guys need to know, words like halving. As previously mentioned, miners are rewarded with Bitcoin for verifying blocks of transactions. This reward is cut in half every 21,000 blocks mined or about every four years. This event is called halving of the halvening. The system is built in a deflationary one for the rate at which new Bitcoin is released into circulation. Remember guys, there'll only be 21 million Bitcoins that are going to be mined. And currently, apparently, allegedly, we're now sitting at about 90% of Bitcoin that has been mined. And I think that's why the value keeps going higher and higher. And the, the minute they've mined all of them, it'll be scarce to get Bitcoin. That's when the value will just keep shooting high. That's why I'm encouraging education right now, guys. Be one of the early adopters, learn about this thing, understand it. This process is designed so that the rewards for Bitcoin mining will continue until 2140, when all Bitcoin is mined from the code and all halvings are finished. The miners will remain incentivized by fees that they will charge the network users. The hope is that healthy competition will keep the fees low. The system drives up Bitcoin's stock to flow ratio and lowers its inflation until it is eventually zero. After the third halving that took place on May the 11th, 2020, the reward for each block mined became 6.25 Bitcoins. The article continues to talk about hashes. The article com continues to talk about the confirmation time and the difficult. There's just so much in just the graphs. It's a very long article. It's the Bitcoin transactions, it covers the keys and the wallets. It, it, it covers the trading bonuses, the CFDs, and it compares it with um, trading Forex and just so much. And I'm just encouraging you to go read the rest of the article. The link is in the description. It is by Investopedia.com. And I'm quite excited that you guys, we are all working this journey together. I hope this video sort of summarizes to you what Bitcoin is. If you've just watched this video alone, I think it sort of summarizes what I've said in a whole lot of other episodes about Bitcoin. So big up to you and I'm glad you've sort of been challenged to go want to learn more because you're probably asking yourself questions there and I don't have the answers right now because I don't know what you want to ask because you're on the other side of the camera but it gives you an opportunity to want to go learn more, go do your own research, go um, attend courses, um, Bitcoin, is, Bitcoin for beginners or cryptocurrency for dummies, whatever those courses are called because that's what I'm going through, that's what I'm learning right now but look for reputable platforms. There's scammers out there. Be careful of the scammers. Keep your money to yourself. Don't give it to anybody. Don't take anybody's advice because this is your money. Thank you so much for being um, for watching. Share the platform. Let others know about it. Don't forget to click the notification bell and welcome to crypto.